What's going on there YouTube and welcome to Fresh Comic Stories. Guys, this is the channel that we basically sit down and cover different kinds of comic book stories. Now guys, today we are going to jump back over to Marvel once again, but this time we're going to pick up with Ultimate Marvel and we are going to cover the Ultimate X-Men storyline called Cable. Yes guys, we get our first appearance of the Ultimate Marvel Cable and this is huge because Cable to me in the Ultimate Marvel Universe is a pretty cool character. I really do like him and I think you guys might like him as well. But anyways guys, please hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, well please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. Now, we begin today's video with Charles Xavier getting back home after spending the night over his latest girlfriend's house, Liliandra. But when he gets home, Quicksilver is there to greet him with something from Nick Fury. With that happening, you have Charles Xavier call Nick Fury up and ask what is this metal bracelet that was given to him by Quicksilver, which you didn't have Nick Fury say that it is something to help keep Jean Grey under control, which if you guys saw the last Ultimate X-Men video for the Ultimate Marvel Universe, Jean Grey went crazy and became the Phoenix. And so Nick Fury is telling Charles Xavier that he needs to convince Jean Grey to wear that bracelet so she can be kept under control before she turns into the Phoenix once again. Now guys, we do get a few pages where we do see what's going on with the X-Men members currently right now. Because there was a small time jump between this story and our last story. Now, there is one book I did skip over, and that was Ultimate X-Men Annual number 2. And the reason why I skipped over that book right there, because well to me personally, that book right there was not good. But in that book, you had two things happening happened in that book. The first thing was that Nightcrawler went crazy because over time in the last few videos Nightcrawler started to think that the X-Men were out to get him. The X-Men were bad people but also he hated Colossus because Colossus was gay and so with all that happening right there Nightcrawler went crazy and just basically kidnapped Dazzler because he felt like Dazzler had a hidden love for him and then the X-Men had to stop Nightcrawler and kind of knock him out. But the second thing to happen in that one book was Rogue. Rogue lost her ability to touch people. Now guys remember, back in Ultimate X-Men Annual number one, Rogue had the ability to touch people once again because she absorbed Gambit powers completely. And so with that happening right there, she was the new Gambit. And so she was able to finally touch people like her boyfriend, Iceman. But in Ultimate X-Men Annual number two, well, she lost that ability all over again. And so now she cannot touch people at all. As a matter of fact, she also lost Gambit powers as well. And so we pick up with her right now kind of having issues with Iceman and their relationship because they can no longer touch each other. Something else that starts to happen is with the character Kitty Pride. This is the beginning of where you have the writers of Ultimate Marvel remove Kitty Pride from the X-Men. Now the main reason why because of her relationship with Spider-Man is why she wants to leave. But you had the idea of her not being happy here and feel like it is wrong to have a group of children be soldiers for some war against mutants and humans. And so she wants to talk to Charles Xavier about her leaving the school completely and basically going back home to live with her mother. That is when we jump over to Charles Xavier and him trying to help Nightcrawler who is in this coma, but also trying to figure out why Nightcrawler has gone crazy. The problem with this situation is that you have a man just teleport in the room saying Charles Xavier 
has to die. Which of course, this is the first appearance of Cable in the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Now, this is going to be a huge difference when we get to the big reveal. But you have Cable trying to kill Charles Xavier for something that has happened in the future. Now, of course, you have Kitty Pride appear, but she is taken out just like that by some of the equipment that he has on her. Then Jean Grey jumps in to try to help, but she is also taken out as well. But before she passes out, she was able to warn the other X-Men about the trouble that is taking place in the room with her. And so you have all the X-Men run down there to help her out with Cable, which Cable is prepared for every single one of them. He takes each one of them out in a hurry. But then the battle comes down to Wolverine versus cable which these two go back and forth with each other now while they are talking to each other you have cable talk to wolverine like he knows him about his timeline about his dead wife and the idea of Sabretooth being his father or sorry his son but since wolverine is pushing cable to his limit cable has no choice but to pop out claws that looks just like Wolverines. Now, this is a huge difference between Ultimate Marvel Cable and the main Marvel Universe Cable, where in the main Marvel Universe, Cable is actually the son of Cyclops and Jean Grey. Well, really, the son of the clone of Jean Grey, Madeline Pryor. But Cable was taken into the future to save his life from the techno virus, which when he came back, he was an old man with guns we all love. But here in the Ultimate Marvel Universe, nah, throw all of that out the window. This is just Wolverine from the future. That is it. And there is nothing else about him. No crazy time travel and son of a clone of Jean Grey, just Wolverine from the future who somehow lost his healing factor ability. And so it is really a huge difference between the two universes. But getting back into the main story, because this is where things take a turn for the worse, because we pick up with Cable being able to defeat all of the X-Men just like that. Cable was able to take them out because he knows how to fight these guys because he is Wolverine from the future. But after beating down on the X-Men, he takes Jean Grey as a hostage. He tells the X-Men that if they want to see her again, well, they will have to give him Charles Xavier when they meet up again. And so you have Cable just teleport out of the room and he is now gone, which leaves the X-Men wondering what the heck are they going to do? Because now this man is gone in the wind. And so then we jump forward like a couple hours where we see Charles Xavier is trying to use Cerebro to find Jean Grey and Cable, which of course he is unable to find them anywhere. But that is not really the most important part about this setting. The most important part is what happens in the lower part of the X Mansion, where we pick up with Wolverine and Storm making sure Kitty Pride is okay. But while they are down there, you have someone else appear in the room. And this time, it is Bishop, which he tells us in the X-Men that he came here to stop Cable, that he is also from the future as well. Now, Wolverine does not want to hear his crap and knocks out Bishop and takes him upstairs to talk to Charles Xavier. Now we do jump over to Jean Grey and Cable, where we come to find out that they're still in the present day because Cable is unable to travel into the future just yet. Right now, he has to basically build up the energy to time travel back into the future. But with that being said, you have Jean Grey kind of like, listen, the X-Men are gonna come for me and defeat you this time. But you have Cable say, don't worry, I brought backup and that's when we see he basically brought other people from the future as well to help him out. Now, I don't know if this is his own version of the X-Force or the six pack, 
but this right here is going to be Cable's team to fight against the X-Men. Which we now jump over to Bishop talking to the X-Men about Cable and the future where they come from. How things are all messed up. Well, literally every X-Men is dead as well except Wolverine who is Cable. Now you have Bishop tell the X-Men that Cable has the idea that if he kills off Charles Xavier, that the future will change and everything will be okay because everything pinpoints to Charles Xavier. Now you do have Charles Xavier tell the X-Men that Bishop knows where to find Cable and Jean Grey. Also that Bishop will now be the leader of the team for this next mission to get Jean Grey back safely. Also that Cable tells Cyclops, sorry that Cable, Bishop tells Cyclops to stay behind because with his feelings all over the place, it could get in the way of the mission. Which we then jump over to the X-Men minus Cyclops going to Finland because Bishop was able to figure out that Cable was going to be there. And so when the X-Men get there, automatically Rogue Arm gets blown off. And so that now leaves her going back to the X mansion. Now, she did absorb some of the healing factor of Wolverine. And so they are hoping it will be enough to save her life while she rests at the mansion. But you have the rest of the X-Men fighting against Cable and his fellow mates in this big battle at this old Weapon X base. Which this is kind of cool because we do get a few pages of these two sides fighting against each other and pretty evenly matched. Now this chapter, which by the way, we are now on the third chapter of this storyline. The biggest thing about this chapter takes place at the very end, which real quick, I was really liking this story until this part happened, which honestly, it is the most messed up part about this whole storyline because we pick up with Cyclops and Charles Xavier who stay behind at the X mansion, which Cyclops wants to leave to go get his girl back, Jean Grey. But Charles Xavier is trying to calm Cyclops down, which then you have Cyclops snap back at Charles Xavier saying, you do not understand. But then you have Charles Xavier tell Cyclops that he does because we come to find out that Charles Xavier has been in love with Jean Grey for a very, very long time. Guys, Jean Grey is like 19 years old in this universe. And this man has been in love with her for a very long time. That is nasty. That is horrible. What is wrong with you, Ultimate Marvel? And so after Charles Xavier told Cyclops he was in love with Jean Grey, we pick up with those two in another jet flying to the fight, which as soon as they get there, you have Cyclops jump out of the plane and tells Charles Xavier he better hurry up and tell Storm to save his life and also read the mind of Cyclops to learn how to land the plane because Cyclops is pissed off at Xavier and acting like he does not care if the plane crashed at all, which would kill Charles Xavier. But of course, Storm was able to save Cyclops, but here comes the big problem. Charles Xavier did not read the mind of Cyclops so he can learn how to fly the plane. Because the reason why I say that is because Moments after Cyclops jumped off the plane and joined the big battle, Charles Xavier crashed a plane right in the middle of the battle. Now everyone was able to survive the crash, but the biggest thing to happen is one of the Wolfpack people's spine is broken. And so all of them dip out into a portal, which of course leads them back into the future to save their fellow teammates life. But with them leaving, it comes down to the big one-on-one -on -one battle, which of course is Cyclops versus Cable. Because remember, Cable is holding Jean Grey hostage. And so Cyclops is all in on fighting Cable on his own to get the woman he loves back from Cable. 
which this leads into a few pages of Cyclops trying to fight Cable. But again, this is Cable, who is just Wolverine from the future. And so Cable knows how to fight against Cyclops. He knows how to go one-on-one -on -one with Cyclops and knows where to attack him. But while the two of them are fighting against each other, you have Charles Xavier crawling into the room of the battle trying to help Cyclops to save Jean Grey. The biggest problem comes when Cable pulls out a grenade, which Charles Xavier is the only one to see it. And so he uses his powers to throw Cyclops out of the room to save his life. But the bomb goes off, which after it goes off, all the X-Men see is just a pile of bones, which through Wolverine confirms that Charles Xavier is now dead. Alright guys, so this is the part of the video where I basically sit down and give my thoughts on about this storyline. Now, to be honest with you guys, to be actually honest with you guys, I do like Ultimate Cable storyline to a certain degree. I like some aspects of this storyline. For example, the Cyclops versus Cable part, because it's Cyclops fighting against Cable for the woman he loves. That's kind of cool. I also like the idea of changing Cable's origin completely. Because honestly guys, when you think about Cable in the X-Men universe, in the main Marvel X-Men universe, Cable's origin story is all over the place. And you cannot lie and tell me, no it's not, it's pretty simple. Yes, it's simple to a certain degree, but truthfully, in the main Marvel Universe, Cable's origin storyline is all over the place. And so with Ultimate Marvel Cable story being more of just, hey, he's Wolverine from the future who lost his healing factor, lost his arm somehow in the future, and that's why he's here now as Cable, because he grew old, lost his arm, and he's trying to save his future. To me personally, that makes more sense than just, hey, his Cyclops son who got some virus, who in the future to find a way to fight the virus, technically did not get rid of the virus, came back as his time traveling hero who gets used almost every other page because Marvel has a timeline issue. And so when I sit down and look at Cable in Ultimate Marvel Universe, I like this version so much better than the main Marvel Universe version. That's just me personally though. But honestly guys, the reason why we're covering this storyline right now is because from this point right here and probably the next like three to four or five videos of Ultimate X-Men is going to tell one big huge story that involves Cable, Bishop, the X-Men and leading up to one big battle between the Phoenix and Apocalypse. But anyways guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's video, so please hit that like button down below and also subscribe for more comic book stories in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, well please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road.